Kid, son, you are now in the Rapid Response Tactical Squad. The double RTS. Kicks fast. Breeze, kill it. We kill them all. Our God sort them out. Very proficient already. When we turned up in Prague, we had a two-week um, rehearsal period with the military advisor. Ladies and gentlemen, Tom McAdams. He's a real artist. He's one of the best. <laughs> Trainers, SAS. <laughs> so many of these military advisors have probably spent more time in Hollywood than the military at this point. Okay, listen in. Unload! And with Tom, he had just come out, I think, a few months. He had just left after 25 plus years in the services. So there was no kind of jadedness to him. He had just experienced it. So everything was as fresh as it could be. I was leaving the military uh, 13th of September, and this job was coming up at the beginning of October. So when I said, yeah, fine, I'll do it for three weeks. And obviously, I've been here now for three months. It was completely different to what I expected. It's funny, I mean, I've done a couple of military-type movies before, and but I've never had training like this. Alright, are you happy with that? Yeah. Fucking hell. <laughs> Don't put the barrel into the ground, Yogi. Pass that on. Have your wits about you, because lane ammunition does in the bit. Are you safe, Captain? We've got time for one more, is that it? <laughs> What I was brought to do here was to advise on all the military tactics, all the techniques, get the guys to look like special forces and make them look like they've had years of experience soldiering. Magazine 25 rounds, low. Tom was very determined to, I think for himself as much as anything, make us look as authentic as possible. There is no bullshitting with Tom. Tom is a straight guy. What you see is what you get, and I love that. Wait until I get the command up. OK, rounds down, down on one knee and then start working together. That's communication. Lead scout, as soon as you're ready, start patrolling. I took it very seriously, because that's what I'm here to do. OK. OK. Let's do it, then. Not only did he kind of instill the, the military knowledge and know-how and skills, but he also helped us bond and form into a, a solid, cohesive unit. The biggest thing was to, to get them to gel as a team. And we started off by going to the gymnasium every morning. 6 a.m., working out together, training together, going through and trying to simulate what soldiers would go through. The only difference is, is, is you know, they, of course, go to war, and, and we go back to our hotel. <laughs> and I call up the pizza place. It was important that they trusted me and got to, to, to listen to what I have to say. Happy? Yeah. OK, let's see a good drill, then. Most importantly was the safety aspect of using weapons. Right, what we're going to do uh, before we actually start is a demonstration of um, what damage a blank, blank round could do, just so that we know on the safety side of it uh, you're not pointing weapons at each other. Because they are real weapons. Um, even though we're using blank ammunition, it can still kill you. And one of the first things I do with the guys is demonstrate how serious a blank round is. and. The way I did that was to use a polystyrene head and shoot it with a blank round, you know, and it disintegrates. You can make a hell of a mess, as you can see by that. So yeah. do not point the weapon at anyone. Always aim off. Time scale, I think, is an important factor in anything, and some of the guys have probably not had the time to practice with the weapons that they should have. For inspection, for so I start from the very beginning and just go through all the basics. And holding the weapon, ensure that you hold it correctly. And I'll just quickly go through that. Stripping and assembling. Now so for keep the uh, work parts like that, a nice uniform manner. You're not going to have any problems putting it back together again. You're going to be firing double taps. It's two rounds, OK, followed by another two rounds, so on and so on, until I tell you to stop. Um, I want to look at you and see what reaction it has, OK? Target to your front, in your own time, go on. It's very interesting having that amount of 
power in the sense that it's coming from your body, coming from your hands, you know, uh, it generates a certain kind of energy. OK, is anybody not finished? Once I started doing the weapon training and I got to a reasonable standard, I could then move on to patrolling skills, which entails holding the weapon correctly and how you move around objects, how you adopt different fire positions. Then they have stoppage drills, loading, unloading, all, all the, the stuff that a soldier, a basic soldier, would have to know. In the script, it was written that, that, that we would say retreat, and Tom was right there saying, no, you would never say retreat, you would say fall back. And I said, okay, and I said, would we say, get the fuck out of here? And he's like, yeah, you'd say that too. I was like, okay. We started off with um, Checkmate AK-47s, which are very light in comparison to what we have now. They're just very light weapons. So we had a lot of um, movement drills with that, uh, which obviously at first is kind of nerve-wracking, you know, with the ammo and stuff. Some of the actors were very intimidated by the weapon and nervous of the weapon. Try and be a little bit more relaxed, some of you. I'm not, no, not pointing the finger. Get yourself comfortable. Bring it up, double tap. If you want to get down on one knee, double tap. Stand up or lie down and just get used to different fire positions and just double tap. But try and keep both your eyes open, OK? I'm still flinching. <laughs> it's, you know what, the flinching... No, I'm not too bad with the flinching, it's blinking. Sometimes, and this is the truth, sometimes air comes out of the barrel of the, the weapon and it kind of makes you blink a little bit. It's not fair. It's just, you know, it's air. <laughs> to try and stop the actors from flinching, especially using something like the chain gun or the minigun, call it what you want, it's a 30 cal weapon. And with that weapon system, even though it's firing blank rounds, the actual overpressure that comes out is quite immense and there's a hell of a flash with the thing. Firing this huge gun and, and this huge sound, the flinch would be right in my eyes. And Tom would see that and he would say, Deovi, you're flinching. Do it again. You're flinching. I think I, more than most, had to go through <laughs> a lot of firing to get that flinch out of my eyes. <laughs> what do you think of that thing? <laughs> <laughs> this was the very first time that this, the destroyer has actually picked up that weapon. Now, you see the weapon of choice. So, my question to you is, how did it feel? It felt... Let's tell everybody at it home. It felt awesome. It's huge. It's, it's massive. No, I'm talking about the gun. <laughs> <laughs> The reason I went into so much detail was so that they look like they know what they're doing. And everything they do looks like they're special forces. I'm not going to lie to you, I love it. I have had so much fun. When you are firing a shitload of rounds and it's so visceral, it's so real, you know, it, it really helps me do my job because the leap of imagination for me being in this circumstance, immediately it's not acting anymore. It makes you feel like I'm really doing it. kind of, you know, our collective hope. When you look at this unit of soldiers, you, actually, you, know, you will see them performing as a highly professional uh, squad of guys. Clear left. Clear right. If you're going to portray our military, then we damn sure better have our shit together and we better look tight with what we're doing. So we should get together and we should know in a certain environment where there's present danger or possibly danger looming, then we should know how to walk, how to talk, how to give hand signs, eye signs, what we're listening for. Look alive, man. Game time. 
gotta say, when we're inside that chopper, when that door is closed and all the guys are standing there ready to go out with their weapons loaded, cock lock and ready to kick ass, you gotta ask yourself, the real deal soldiers who go through that, who are standing behind that door, what they must be thinking. They got a lot of love, a lot of respect for those guys. They're the real deal. It's movie shit. It's cool shit, but they're the real deal. They picked it up very quickly, and, and obviously as time's gone by, they've done so much of it, they're, they're starting to switch on to the fact of how to go about it. I certainly wouldn't leave them alone, though, <laughs> to be perfectly honest with you, but, but they are learning. Again, you're, not sure. you're good on the mess. <laughs> Do you want to do it again? Yeah. That's good. Okay.